Hi, welcome to the Spiritual Connection Show. I'm your host, Katie Augustin. So I'm a transformation coach, I'm an energy healer, I'm a shamanic practitioner, and I'm the spiritual head of the Transformation Center CT, which is based in Westport, Connecticut. At the center, we offer a variety of trainings, we have workshops, um, we have a lot of different experiential activities. We also do individual coaching and healing sessions. You know, right now during the pandemic, um, most things are not um, happening. And um, one that is happening online is our monthly or sometimes twice a month event called Satsang, which is shamanic, I mean, which is sans Sanskrit, excuse me, for in the company of the truth. So this is just a really nice time for us to be together. We do some meditation, some chanting. It's a very low key, uplifting type of event. Um, and it's just about an hour. So look on the Transformation Center website for that. I'm gonna put up our contact info so you can check it out. Here we go. So this is our website, transformationcenterct.com. You can reach us at that email address or that phone number. And you can find out, keep it, keep it up to date with what's going on because hopefully we will be transitioning back um, to in-person events very soon. And hopefully, maybe by the time you see this, we will have already done that. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So you probably know about um, the Spiritual Connection Show. And right now we're doing it on Zoom. And each week I have a different guest. And really the purpose is, you know, I'm all about connection. So it's about connecting with each other as well as connecting more fully with our own spiritual selves. And when our guests come on, you're gonna learn about their spiritual journey, you know, how they evolved, what they're up to now, and lots of things that you can learn that would be helpful in your own journey. Because we are here to support you on your path. So thanks for joining us tonight. So I'm very excited um, to introduce my guest, um, and his name is Matan. Cohen Citron, and I'm just meeting him recently, but it turns out, um, I'm gonna share his information on the screen as well, because it turns out that he is also in Westport, Connecticut. Yeah, there we go. And he has a studio called Matan's Movement, and he is a somatic practitioner, and it sounds like he does a lot of other things that we're gonna learn about. I can't wait to, um, to hear all about it. So. Welcome to the show, Matan, and um, thank you for having me. Of oh, course, sure. you're welcome. I'm glad this worked out. Um, so, you know, the first question that I like to ask my guest is, um, can you share a little bit about your spiritual journey, you know, how you got here, anything really that you want to tell us about yourself? All right. Every story <laughs> starts with something that happens, and I kind of... Uh, I'm telling stories every night to my daughters and uh, I don't know exactly where the beginning, but they should be a beginning. So I think it's a little bit of a family business that I stepped into. Um, my grandma is a psychic, my, both my parents um, do it. And for me personally, when I guess I started practicing, like doing a daily practice was after I finished uh, my army service. Um, I had this idea that I want to study yoga or meditation or something like that. And I traveled around the world and tried different teachers, different lineage, different practices. And about two years into it, uh, I met my first teacher in India. And the reason I call it him, my first teacher, because that was the first practice that really uh, got me hooked on this topic before of that it was i guess uh, the this uh, the way people practice um, around the west that they have something they enjoy it they flirt with that but kind of he got me completely hooked on yoga and today i did that it's a daily practice and that i do it every day so that was my foundation and 
from there, I think I practiced, I would say five days a, a week for the past 20 years. And my practice evolved to different things, other from the yoga, meditation, Qigong. And then I found that I love movement a lot. I got into corrective movement, uh, Pilates, Feldenkrais, and, and keep exploring this topic. Yeah, wow. Well, that's awesome. So you started this very young, if you started 20 years ago. I did start it very young, but then I thought that I was old. And, you know, when you're 20, you think you know everything. <laughs> yeah, well, I yes, but it's great that you were able to find, it sounds like it really has become or is your passion. Um, and then you could just explore from there. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, so what, um, what would you say is your main um, focus or your main element right now? Or is it kind of e evenly divided across lots of different? Um, um, it's yeah. divided because, you know, like we, we in the, I am in the world of body, mind, and spirit. So um, I find it to go in a, in a cycle. So there are cycles that I kind of, I don't want to care about the body and alignment and I want to care more about spirit. And there are moments that sometimes it feels like I'm a physical therapist uh, coming to work and, and there are moments that it's integration. So it really depends, but I kind of, uh, uh, I used to teach a lot of yoga many years ago and now I kind of do Pilates and movement. So I work with a very different clientele to achieve different uh, results. Um, and I also do what's called somatic coaching, that is yes, getting people more into their body uh, and out of fight and flight. So this is something that I'm really passionate about uh, these days. Um, because what I realize is that a lot of the, the struggles, the challenges that we have in our society is because we're so much in our mind and we kind of have to make our way back into our heart. And so that's what these days uh, make, I, I don't, yeah, that's my passion these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I, I can I can relate to that. I I because I see a lot of people who um, are just out of touch with with their body in general and their heart in particular. Yeah, because we we do get caught up in our mind and you know that little voice in our head that's um, telling us you know, we should do that or we shouldn't do that. And it's, it's very prevalent, especially in our area, don't you think, down here in um, Connecticut? Yeah, it's like basically, you know, one of the, the sentences that got me hooked is uh, I took a course online uh, on human biology. And it's very, it was very interesting to see because if you look at our uh, cousins, I guess, the chimpanzees, they may walk, walk their way up in society and they get to a point that they're, you know, they're up in the hierarchy and they get enough food, they get enough sex, they get enough safety and their stress level, their cortisol level is going down and they're pretty much enjoying life and they enjoy longevity. And, uh, and this is not something that we can uh, say about our area, that having more gives us a, a peace of mind. It's like that, in a way, the opposite experience is that, you know, we work so hard, we get to it, you know, like, and I, you know, I see it living, uh, working in Westport, I live in Fairfield, is that it doesn't give that safety and that peace of heart having so much. And so I think that's what we, we struggle with, with that journey back from after years of being in our minds and strategizing to a point that 
you know we don't know how to be present in our body and spend time with our beloved one one and i think that's a, a perfect day period that shows us that uh, that mirror that you know if you healthy and safe you know you can thrive in this period you don't necessarily have to to suffer because there is uncertainty hmm. yeah wow that's a really good way of putting it that it's almost as though the more we have the less um satisfied we are you know yeah. like this, this constant striving you know like the more you have materially it's kind of like you get on that um path to where you you just want more and more so it, there's something that's got to you know i find that unless there's something that happens you know to break that that cycle um a lot of times it is something you know, not very positive that happens. And then that's when people start to wake up and they go, oh, wait a minute, you know, what, what am I doing? You know, why am I doing this? You know, it sort of gets them out of their head a little bit into like looking at the big picture. What is it that I, what's really important to me, right? Yes. And, you know, I think you're, you know, you're right on the nose with that uh, in terms of crisis. And, you know, that, uh, that also what happened, happened to me because uh, you know i had everything and i wasn't satisfied and something happened and you know it kind of it made me brave enough i guess to say to myself matan you're wrong you know it's like you you know you got all of of this and you're still not happy and you need i guess the we need the courage to to step into our, I guess, deepest fears of ourselves, because, you know, if you want, I guess, a, a very simple theory, there are two emotions, love and fear. Why are we not experiencing love all the time? Because we haven't dealt with our fear, like we've been managed by our fears. And, you know, we always uh, compensating to those fears. So it's by the way we organize ourself in our body and you know as an energy worker you know that some people are completely here some people are in front of their body some people are completely behind their body some people stuck in you know the throat many different ways that we organize ourselves but they're all a way of compensation to who we really are and you know we are afraid to you know to be who we are yeah that's that that's kind of amazing because that's something that i say all the time there's either love or there's fear yeah I, I, and i haven't heard anybody else say that so that's really that's amazing and yeah and because we are love we, that's all we are to me that's all there is in the world you know in the, in the universe is love and we forget that, you know, we get away from it. And like you said, it's, it's the fear that, that causes that. So, yeah, that's, that's great. That, you know, um, if we can help people realize that, then that's just like the best thing we, we can do, in my book. Yes, absolutely. You know, I think, you know, like after, you know, like over the years, I study many modalities and there are so many modalities and so many practices that they all work. But at the bottom line, I guess what we all trying to, uh, to tell the story that we try to tell, and I assume that's why you're doing your, your show, is basically giving 50 or 150 or 200 interviews but basically they all say the same thing. Like, you know, like feel right now, like the life happens at the present moment and we can develop that skill of feeling because that's the, basically the only thing that we have. We can talk about news, problems, theories all day long, but it doesn't matter. It's like, what really matter is like, you know, the, lessons from the dying you know and i i experienced it three years ago is basically the the only question that we ask ourselves is about the the quality of love that we can express 
in our um, in our life. That's that's basically it. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that for me, what really gives the courage to transform because you know, like we're we're such as a you know we're such an interesting animal, humans, and we're such a creature of habit. And our habits, you know, part of our habits, and I guess this is basically yoga philosophy, is like, you know, our mind basically run into attraction, whatever attraction is for you. Sugar, uh, sex, uh, alcohol, and running away from fear. That's basically it. So, you know, it's like, once we take ourselves seriously, we kind of start, you know, understand that we constantly fall. Like, you know, we fall a thousand times a day. And the whole lesson is about, you know, stand up and feel. Stand up and feel. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's, that's beautifully put because it, it, it's a reminder, you know, that we do have a choice. And I think once we can acknowledge that and, and practice that, then, you know, then we see, okay, we, we do have a choice to not feel um, a certain way or um, say a certain thing or do a certain thing. You know, we have a choice to go back and, and be more authentic and, and, and have that real um, connection too with people. You know, instead of being afraid um, you know, for me, it's, it's like it's about being vulnerable. And when we're vulnerable, then the other person can open up. You know, if you're having trouble communicating with someone, it's not because of them, it's because of you, right? Yes, it's, you know, it's a combination of both. But yes, it's completely because of us taking that responsibility and how, you know, how we see the world. Like, uh, so. You know, it's like the way when I work with people, I like to explain, it's like we see the world very simple in pictures and in words. And you know, if you say something that I don't like, basically you trigger a picture or an image or a word that I don't like. And this, that's, I guess, what you're, trying, what you're trying to say, which, you know, I completely agree with that. The concept of choice that you're saying, yes, it's true. But obviously, you know, like uh, in hypnotherapy, basically we go in and out of hypnotic states all day long, okay? You know, when we do it as a parent, we do it to our kids and we do it to our friends, to our environment, and we learn it from our environment. And I think that uh, what we don't get in our society, in our education, is the... Uh, is understanding how much choice we have over our life. And once, you know, because we believe that you're supposed to get the flu once a, a year, or that you're supposed to spend two weeks uh, sick in bed every year, and all, all of these different beliefs, like we believe in doctors, we believe in lawyers, we believe in, I don't know, people who wear uniform or wh whatever, we you know, everybody has his own belief system. Um, but once we take, you know, that voice of choice and we start exercising more and more, I guess that's the first stage of, uh, of transformation, that we're not victims of, you know, this life that I'm destined to be, to get the flu once a year. I can actually be healthy and not get sick. Mm -hmm. Right, right, exactly. Do things to prevent it that um, change the trajectory of your life, you know, just like everything else. Um, you know, the first step is awareness. And I think once people are aware that what they say and do makes a huge difference, um, then, they, then they can do it. Then they can make a positive difference. You know, why, why accept what we have been um, conditioned to learn, you know, especially I think in our culture right now, it's very easy to just do what you're told, you know, like starting early with the kids in school, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, 
Yeah, we could talk about education. I'm sure that's a topic you're interested in. <laughs> It's well, like, you know, it, it's, you know, in the past three months, I've been a first grade uh, teacher for my daughter. Uh, so I can talk about, about it a lot, but it's not just education for kids. It's education for adults that, you know, that believe in that system and, you know, that following all these rules will make us happy. And, you know, and I think most adults get to that uh, stage that they followed all of these rules and they're just kind of like helpless. So... You know, it's like that's the, you know, like for me, I came, I came to the U.S. 15 years ago and, you know, I achieved the American dream, a house, two cars, you know, a nice, all of that. But it's, it doesn't, there isn't any happiness in that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I look around like, it's like, what, the vacations, the what, what's the happy, the happy part, part of it. So, you know, I... I think it's a, I think the interesting thing is like for, for everyone, like how, you know, you, you spoke about vulnerability. It's like, how do we stop where we are and say, it doesn't work. Like, you know, let's, let's stop here and take a week, two weeks, a month, a year to brainstorm. If, you know, it's like about this life, about what we're doing. Does it really make me happy to go to work for 10 hours a day because everybody else works for 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, you know, that's the part of courage that, you know, in a way we brainwash to live in that high paced environment and think that's the only way we can live. But, you know, there are so many alternatives that uh, we need to, we need to explore and I think we're very afraid to explore. And this is something really true to our industry right now. And uh, that uh, I like to invoke that sense of, uh, of playfulness in people mm -hmm. that, you know, if we're to work together on whatever, let's talk about nutrition. I don't do nutrition. So it's easy, <laughs> so it's easy to speak about it. One second. Mm -hmm. Hmm. so in any process basically we need to explore there isn't you know it, there isn't like a seven rules for happiness or five ways to five steps to lose weight or all of this like we individuals and we need to i guess celebrate our individuals by exploration of what really makes us happy yes Yes, that's, that's, that's perfect. I mean, that's basically what, what I do as a coach is everybody's different and, and we can start to look and see, you know, get to know ourselves. And it's like, what, what drives us? You know, there's certain things um, like we sometimes start with our values and what, what is it that we cannot live without? Yeah. And that's a really good exploration for people because they haven't really thought of it that way, you know, because like you said, we're conditioned to get a job, go to work, and our happy time is when we're not working, when we're on vacation, you know, and you're going like, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. ideally, we should all have the work that we love that's fulfilling, um, but that's not always possible because as we know, there's plenty of work that has to be done. You know, that's one thing we learned from the pandemic, the essential workers, they're essential, you know, and we, and, you know, we're not necessarily the ones doing the work, at least I'm not, but I really am grateful for people who, who do have those abilities and, you know, can stick with it. But, um, but anyway, yeah, you do get to the point in your life where you do start to question what's important, um, you know, fulfilling that type of thing. And um, that's great that, you know, people like you and I are here to help. And, and I think, um, Matan, that this is, this is growing. I get the sense that um, it's an expanding um, universe that people are starting to wake up and question what's important to them and, and who can help them. So I think it's, it's great that that we got to, we, that we get to do this i feel privileged um to get to do this yeah me too i'm yeah. excited to wake up in the morning and you know for the day yeah yeah every day you know and, and i'm also during this time it's great because it's like a pause is what i'm calling it 
Um, you know, so maybe we're not quite as busy, although I feel like I'm even more busy, but doing different things. And I'm trying to push myself every day to do something out of my comfort zone. And I'm, you know, encouraging other people to do that as well. This is an opportunity for us right now. I think it's an amazing opportunity to change habits right now, to explore, to develop uh, different skills. You know, the, you know, it's like when I started teaching, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I said like, if you meditate for three, mo- for three months, it's proven scientifically that your brain is going to be different. And because we're, you know, we, we stop doing certain things, we, it will be harder for us to do. So, for example, I, now I started uh, working outdoors. So I drive to people's houses. So I have to force myself to drive on the highway because I forgot how to drive on the highway. And I'm, I, I love it because I develop all the time certain skills of being a teacher to my girls and mm-hmm. doing all of this work in the house that I haven't done in years. So I'm excited about learning. And, you know, yeah. this, is, this is a great, time to take ourselves as a, as a project as a project as a positive project not that we have to work on ourselves or to improve ourselves you know, um, you know that 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 never work uh, to work on yourself on blame but uh, because it's like you know you can't talk about your next vacation or your next uh, weekend with your girlfriend and all of or your next time that you're gonna take kind of stress because you learn to live in the present moment, it's kind of like a perfect lab environment that you have. That yes, a mind saying all of these excuses, like why you should not be happy, and you know, and uh, how our whatever bodies get old, and whatever nonsense that our minds like to say. But it's all you know. We in a lab, nothing happens. It's amazing. <laughs> Great. There's so much possibility out there still. So I, we're going to wrap up now. This, this half hour goes by so fast, but I'm so grateful that you were able to come on the show today. It was a pleasure meeting you. I have a feeling we're going to be connected and do things together. This is because we, we seem to be on the same wavelengths. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm also thankful, grateful, happy Great. that we connected. All right, I'm going to show you your contact info one more time so people can know how to reach you. So this is Matan's, um, Matan's Movement, and that's his website. So you can reach him there. And then I'm just going to show one more time how you can reach um, me at Transformation Center CT. Um, we'd love to have you come to our next satsang. And then I'm going to put us on gallery view so I can just say thank you to our audience for joining us today. Um, And thank you again to Matan um, for being here. Is there anything you want to say to wrap up? We have about another half a minute if you'd like to. What would I like to say to the world? Do whatever you want. Don't do what I tell you to do. It's about your life. You know, I don't believe in three rules for happiness and all of that. Like find your heart and live from your heart. It's that right. simple. Yeah, because we're, we're all different, but we're all one as well. Yeah. yeah. I believe in principles, not in rules. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks again. I'm going to end the recording and good night to everybody. Namaste. Here we go. And now, wait a minute. Mm-hmm.